Greetings from the Augusta National Golf Club. Round three of the 88th Masters Tournament in the game. They call it moving day. It was a challenge to move up the leaderboard alongside U.S. Open champion Jeff Ogilvy. I'm Scott Van Pelt. Let's get to the highlights and show folks what specific challenges this golf course presented. Mainly was the greens. There was wind, yes, but not nearly as windy as Friday. How underestimated is this part of Scotty Scheffler's game? Well, it's incredible. He's the number one in the world, and he's that for a reason. His short game is uh, very, very, very reliable. He holds out more often, it feels like, than most. After a mammoth drive on 10, what's the mistake, Jeff, you cannot make on 10? Only mistake is hitting it over the back. Terrible down there. Goes into the bushes and the pine straw. Not a good spot. You see that green awfully hard. It bounces trampolines, actually, to a degree, almost forward. You see Scotty a bit bemused. He doubles it after he missed a short bogey putt, but he gets him right back on 13. The key to this putt's what? He's under the hole. He left it the spot where he could make the putt. Straight up the hill. Bang. Thunderbolt right back to six under at the top, and then moving in front with this birdie putt on 15. Once again, putting from the rock spot straight up the hill. Another nice birdie. And that's the club in the bag. If it works out, it's going to be hard to beat because Tita Green, he's peerless from the middle of the fairway on 18 after a bogey at 17. This approach is spectacular. Beautiful shot. I mean, number one in the world. It's one of the best looking iron shots in the 18. Finishes off with a birdie. One of the best, but we'll show you one better. Finish it with a birdie to put his nose out in front and carry the lead into the final round, something he knows all about. Scheffler. At one point, it backed up to four under, finishes at seven under par. Pretty busy second nine for the world number one. Bryson DeChambeau on 15. This is his third. You're, I'm asking you to guess to a degree, but what explains this shot? Well, that's where all the patrons have been standing. Must have had an awkward lie, or he just hit an awful shot. Could have been a con confluence of a number of things, but now he's in scramble mode, trying to avoid a double bogey and he can't. You've got to avoid big numbers around this place, but they're lurking around every corner. So Bryson is backing up all the way to number, uh, to two under par, I should say. This is his third from the fairway. Third into 18, looks like he's gonna finish his day off poorly, and how about that? What a roar, and DeShambo, take a bow, he earns it. Finishing with a remarkable three and an incredibly involved second nine, but still very much in the fight. Max Homa tied for the lead in greens and regulation, but his challenge on this day was, was on the greens, just couldn't buy a putt. Hitting the ball better than anyone else in the tournament, just can't make the ball go in the hole for a birdie. Finally here on 18, finally knocks one in. Big fist pump, he knows what that meant. It's a par putt but it had the feel a bit like a birdie on a day where, as you see on the card, didn't have a single birdie, and yet just two off the lead. Ludwig Oberg, in his first ever major, looks incredibly composed and comfortable. You believe this guy could be eventually world number one? He's looking every bit like a future world number one. Looks unflappable, a bit like Scheffler. Unbelievable golf swing. Gets great shots all day. Short game great, putting great. First time at Augusta, very impressive. That got him to four under on the fifth, and that's where he would finish the day. He is right there in the mix. So, too, is a two-time major champion, Colin Morikawa. He's changed putters this week, and it was working beautifully to get his day started. Can't get your day started any better than that. Birdie on the first, eventually birdies number two and number three. That's where you have to make the score at the Masters. First three holes, the next few holes are really difficult. Hard to overstate just how challenging the putt can be on that short par for a third. You explained why this was a great miss on 18. What's the key to this? Well, if you're gonna miss, you have to miss left of the flag. You can get it, you can get it up and down and manage it from anything left of that green, but anywhere right is a definite bogey. So from the fairway, bails out left, Morikawa, a relatively, I say easy, no, but a manageable up and down. All pars on the second nine on a day where par was a great score for just about any hole and for any round. You see nothing particularly low, although Colin Morikawa does shoot around in the 60s. He's chasing Scotty Scheffler, who is very familiar with this position, out in front, heading into the final 18. I mean, it's nice having that experience, but going into tomorrow, that's really all that it is. And I can, you know, reflect on some of the stuff from that round. And um, this is a position that I'm very familiar with, and I'm excited for the, the challenge of going and trying to win the golf tournament tomorrow. But at the end of the day, it really is all about my process and, you know, staying patient out there and just trying to hit good shots and, and hit some quality putts as well.
That's a dude who's so unimpressed with himself. It really is Im impressive to me just how reasonable he is about what it's worth to be who he is. And you see, when you're number one in the world with an outright 54-hole lead, you win. We all know what happened in 96 to Greg Norman. And, and Jeff, there are only a dozen players currently under par. Because the man on top is Scotty Scheffler, perhaps there's a tendency to say, not that this is a wrap, but it's going to be hard to win. What's your sense of just how far down the board we could go to entertain someone could perhaps win? Yeah, well, Scotty's obviously been very difficult to beat the last uh, couple of years when he's been in front. Um, I think Morikawa is clearly a chance. He's won two majors before. He looks like he's playing great again. Um, we go down to Max Homer, who, if he can make some putts, um, he could he could run away with it. He's hitting the ball so well. If he can just get the ball to go in the hole, much further down than that, it's going to be difficult. Ludwig. It's his first ever major. He's going to have to shoot. And anyone back there behind Ludwig is going to have to shoot a really low round.